Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video we're going to be introducing the topic of calculus. Now there's two major aspects to calculus. The first is differentiation and the second is integration. And in this video we're going to look at differentiation but we're also going to look at how we differentiate polynomial equations. Now in the top left hand corner there we have an example of a polynomial equation and a polynomial equation is an equation with a number of terms involving x. So here we have 0.5x cubed as the first term, minus 4x squared as the second term, and plus 65 as the third term. Therefore we have a polynomial equation. And we'll look at how we differentiate that later in the video. But first of all, just to put into context what we mean by differentiation. So the function in the top there, the y equals 0.5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 65, represents a curve. And the curve that it represents is shown in the bottom right hand corner there, where as the x values increase, we have values of y which firstly decrease and then increase again. So we end up with this curve. Now when we differentiate the function, or when we find the differential of that function, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a way of determining the gradient at different points along this line. So for example, when x equals 2, we can see we have a negative gradient. But at the moment, we don't know what the value of that gradient is, or we don't know the value of the slope of that line. When x equals 5, we have a gradient here that's approaching 0, a slope that's almost 0. And then as we move further along, when x equals 7 and when x equals 8, we can see we have a positive gradient or a positive slope. And once again, we don't know the gradient of that slope. And differentiation can help us to determine that for polynomial functions, for sinusoidal functions, and also for exponential functions. We'll return to this example later in the video. Now the equation and information sheet for this topic gives you some details about how to differentiate polynomial functions. So if we were to have a polynomial function of the form y equals a x to the b, where a is the coefficient of x and b is the power of x, then differentiating that function or finding the gradient would give us dy by dx equals a b x to the power b minus 1. Now just to explain this briefly, we have our original function at the top. When we differentiate that function, we're finding the gradient. Now you may recall from the topic on graphical methods that a gradient is the change in y over the change in x. Well, that's exactly what we mean by the derivative dy by dx, the change in y over the change in x, just that the notation is slightly different when we approach this for calculus. So therefore, this expression is giving us the gradient at different points along the line y equals ax to the b. Now, just to explain this function a little bit more, essentially what we're doing is we're multiplying the coefficient by the power, so the b gets multiplied by the a, and that forms the new coefficient, ab. Okay, so we're multiplying down by the power, and then we reduce the power by 1. So whilst the notation looks complicated, once you understand the process, it becomes relatively straightforward to differentiate polynomial functions and polynomial expressions. So let me just give you a couple of basic examples. If y equals 3x squared, then dy by dx... Well, we're going to multiply the coefficient by the power, and that forms the new coefficient. So 3 times 2 is 6. x, and we're going to reduce the power 2 by 1, so that's going to become 6x to the 1. Well, 6x to the 1 is just the same as 6x. Therefore, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. We'll do another couple of these. If we have y equals 4x cubed plus 3x dy by dx equals, this time we treat each of those terms independently. So 4x cubed is the first term and 3x is the second term. Well 4x cubed, first of all we're going to multiply the coefficient by the power. 4 times 3 is 12, so we get 12x. The power 3 is reduced by 1, so we get 12x squared. Next we have plus 3x that we need to differentiate. 
Well, if you remember in the previous example, we said that 6x to the 1 was the same as 6x. Therefore, 3x is the same as 3x to the 1. And I'm going to add the 1 there just so we can see how this differentiates. Well, 1 times 3 is 3. x to the 1, if we reduce the power by 1, we'll get x to the 0. And x to the 0 is just 1. Essentially what happens is we lose our power of x because now we have 12x squared plus 3 times 1, which is just plus 3. Therefore, the function 4x cubed plus 3x differentiates to 12x squared plus 3. Now we can do this for any number of terms. So we might have y equals 2x to the 5 minus 3x cubed plus 4 x squared plus 3 as an example. Now if we want to find the derivative of that, we would do dy by dx. We're trying to determine the gradient at different points along that line. The first term, well we multiply the power by the coefficient. 2 times 5 is 10, so we get 10x. The power 5 reduces by 1, so we get to the power 4. Next we've got a negative number, but we handle this in exactly the same way. So we've got 3 times minus 3. Well, minus 3 times 3 is minus 9x. And the power 3 gets reduced by 1. So minus 9x squared. Next term, we times the 2 by the 4 to give us the coefficient. So plus 8. Well, x squared becomes x to the 1. And remember we said before, x to the 1 is just x. And finally, we've got a constant plus 3. Well, plus 3 is essentially the same thing as plus 3x to the 0. And the reason for that is because x to the 0 is just 1. Well, if we've got plus 3x to the 0 and we differentiate that, we're going to times the coefficient by the power. And 3 times 0 is just going to give us 0. Well, 0 times anything is just 0. Therefore, Differentiating the constant, plus 3, just gives us 0. So that there is our final derivative. You may find it easier at this stage, rather than to concern yourself with the reasons why a constant differentiates to 0, perhaps it's easier just to remember that when you have a, um, a constant such as plus 3, or it might be minus 10, or plus 8, any constant that isn't multiplied by a power of x is just going to differentiate to 0. I'm just going to show you a couple more of these. Let's say we had y equals 3x plus 4 plus 8 over x squared. Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to modify this expression here. Because at the moment we've got divided by x squared. It's not in the format that we want it in in order to differentiate it. So I'm going to rewrite this. y equals... 3x can remain the same, plus 4 can remain the same, but plus 8 over x squared, I'm going to rewrite as plus 8x to the minus 2. It means exactly the same thing. If we bring the x squared from the bottom to the top, then it becomes x to the minus 2 instead of x to the 2. Now we've got something we can differentiate, because dy by dx equals, well, 3x is the same as 3x to the 1, 1 times 3 is just 3. x to the 1, reducing the power by 1, is x to the 0. Therefore, 3x just differentiates to 3. Then we've got plus 4. And for the reasons discussed up here, 4 is just going to differentiate to 0. So we can disregard that term. And then we've got 8x to the minus 2. Well... If we approach this in exactly the same way as before, we've got minus 2 times 8 is going to give us the new coefficient. Minus 2 times 8 is minus 16. And then we need to reduce the power by 1. So x to the minus 2, well, minusing 1 from minus 2 gives us minus 3. Now, that's perfectly valid in the format it's in, but I'm just going to rewrite this just to tidy things up a little bit. I've got dy by dx equals 3. Well, plus a minus is just a minus. So I'm going to replace that with minus 16. And x to the minus 3 is the same as 1 over x cubed. 
So now I can move my x cubed back onto the bottom. So in the same way that we moved our x squared up to the top here by replacing 8 over x squared with 8x to the minus 2, I can just do the same thing in reverse. So instead of having minus 16x to the minus 3, I now have minus 16 over x cubed. So these types of terms here are interchangeable. The last thing to mention on this topic is something called the second derivative. And the second derivative gives us the rate of change of the gradient. So if we know the gradient, then the rate of the change of gradient will tell us whether that gradient's increasing or decreasing. And once again, I'll give you some examples. So let's say we have y equals 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. The first derivative. Well, if we differentiate that, this is called the first derivative. Well, 4x cubed is going to become 12x squared, applying the laws discussed previously. Minus 2x squared is going to become minus 4x. And minus 3x, or minus 3x to the 1, is just going to become minus 3. That's our first derivative. Well, to find our second derivative, all we do is differentiate our first derivative. Now, our notation for this is d squared y by dx squared. Don't worry too much about the notation here. Just remember that what we're doing is we're differentiating our first derivative. So we're differentiating, first of all, 12x squared. Well, 12x squared differentiated is going to become 24x. And minus 4x differentiated is just going to become minus 4. Therefore, the second derivative of the expression at the top, y equals 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x, gives the second derivative 24x minus 4. And that second derivative gives us the rate of change of the gradient. So now that we know the rules for differentiating a polynomial function, we can differentiate our original function, which was y equals 0.5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 65. So we have dy by dx, which is the differential. Now if we differentiate that first expression, 0.5x cubed, we need to multiply the coefficient by 3, so 0.5 times 3 is 1.5. And then we need to reduce the power from cubed to squared. We reduce the power by 1. Next we've got minus 4x squared. Well, minus 4 times 2 is minus 8, so we have minus 8x. And the reason it remains as minus 8x is because x squared, reducing the power by 1, gives us x to the power 1, and x to the power 1 is just the same as x. Now our final term is 65. Now 65 is essentially the same thing as 65x to the 0. Well, if we multiply our coefficient by 0, then that term is going to become 0. So our final derivative, or our final differentiated equation, dy by dx equals 1.5x squared minus 8x. Now earlier in the video we mentioned that the gradient when x equals 2 was negative and we mentioned that the gradient when x equals 5 is becoming relatively close to 0. It's probably still negative but close to 0 and then when x equals 7 and 8 and so on the gradient is positive. So we can prove that now because we can take our differential equation and we can plug each of those values into the equation. So if we take the derivative when x equals 2 first of all, we will get dy by dx equals 1.5 times 2 squared, because all we're doing is re we're replacing the value of x with 2, minus 8 times 2. Now if we put that through our calculators, that's going to give us a gradient of minus 10 which supports what we said before, where we can see we have a negative gradient when x equals 2. Next we'll do when x equals 5. So when x equals 5, dy by dx equals 1.5 times 5 squared minus 8 times 5. Well, when we run that through our calculators, we'll get minus 2.5. 
So again, we predicted that we had a negative gradient, but a relatively small slope in comparison to when x equals 2. Now finally, when x equals 7, we have dy by dx equals 1.5 times 7 squared minus 8 times 7. Now when we run that through our calculators, we'll get 17.5. So once again, that corresponds with what we predicted, where we expected to get a positive gradient when x equals 7.